thanks to the supporters of channel member A11 Scorpio 1996. Oh, boys and girls, Burton Albion Football Club are in the Premier League. And I don't think we're going to be able to play any home matches until November because we're basically rebuilding the ground. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 21 of Non-Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, it is our season review and transfer special off the back of our glorious promotion season from the Championship. And we're kicking things off. We've not even had the season review yet, but I've had this drop in my inbox. I guess it's a priority to get started on an ASAP. The board have announced plans to modify the stadium capacity with an addition of 2,966 seats, including some installed in parts of the standing areas. As a consequence of this conversion, the overall capacity of the stadium will be reduced. Our already tiny stadium is getting smaller. We're also going to be installing under soil heating. The whole endeavour is going to cost us over £5 million, but has to be done because of Premier League rules. It's going to take six months to do, though, and our capacity will be reduced during during the renovation. So it's not going to be finished until the middle of October. In the meantime, our capacity is going to be 2,966, which is below the Premier League rules. So, and also we won't have the undersoil heating until then. So I don't, I don't really know why we're not ground sharing, or maybe we're about to announce a ground share. So our overall capacity is being reduced to that of which that much is seating. But I guess by the time we're done, 6,007 will be the new seated capacity, maybe? So, in fact, there you go. Plan Stadium, it's 2,500 seats from the terracing conversion, plus 466 additional seats for a total of 2,966 new seats on top of the seats we already had. Does that even get us to 5,000? I don't think it does. Plus under soil heating. You'd think we'd just ground share with Derby, but that's that's put us in debt doing that. We've done that without taking out a loan to do it. Oh no, we have taken out a loan to do it. So we were at Oh my word. Oh my word, this is a disaster. Um we've got we've got we've got no money and no stadium. At least we've got St George's Park to train at still. So that's good. Can we not just play our matches there? Were we filling the ground? This we, so we've been filling the ground week in, week out, and we've celebrated by making it even smaller. So I guess that confirms my fear that there's no expansion capacity. I think we need to go to the board. We need a new ground. We can't ask about the ground because they're working on the current one. This ground is not fit for purpose. I can only assume the board are just planning on a one-year stop in the Premier League, which makes a lot of sense. We probably only will be there one year. But... It's going to be the smallest ground in the Premier League ever, I think. See, now this is quite interesting because if the game is going to continue to offer me jobs that make sense because they're geographically close to where we are, I would be expecting a call from Stoke in the near future. Obviously, they're in the Championship. We're going to be in the Premier League, but they already play in a full-size Premier League stadium and could probably pay me more. So that's an, that's an interesting job to have become available. Um I'm not actively looking, but let's let's have a let's have a little look to see what jobs are available. Um so nothing in the Premier League but in the Championship. I mean Coventry have been relegated so we definitely wouldn't drop down to League 1. I think if I was offered the Stoke job there would be a controversial decision potentially to be made. I don't think I, will. I don't think the game's going to offer me a job from the division below. I don't think. I guess we'll see what happens. And with that, we've finally arrived at the season review with our beautiful little trophy. I imagine next year will be the first one in a while where we don't have a little trophy on our season review. Um, but this is our new arrivals, our signings of the season. The signing of the season goes to Miles Leeburn, and you can't really argue with that, can you? 18 starts, 21 goals, a 7.25 average rating. He was just linked in the media with a £22 million move to Blackburn, who are going to be in the championship next season. Um, and he didn't want to go because he didn't want to join a smaller club. Blackburn, officially, smaller club than Burton. 
that's what makes him signing of the season. Although, to be fair, Alfie Devine probably would question that with his 22 goals from midfield, although a lower average rating. I mean, Lee Ben gets it on average rating at 7.25. He was very, very good. We were supposed to attempt to avoid relegation and we won the league with 100 points because that's what we do whilst maxing out our attendances and being rewarded by the ground being made just a little bit smaller. Um, we specialised in scoring six goals this season. We were quite good at scoring six goals, uh, especially against Sheffield United and financially apart from all the money we've got to spend on the stadium things are genuine generally on the up our massive sponsorships that were obviously huge when we were down in league two probably going to be less impactful in the Premier League um, but still bringing in over five million pounds a year in sponsorships broadcast revenue was up massively for being in the championship as was corporate and hospitality prize money was down because we didn't have a cup run but match day revenue was up our ticket prices do go up next year, but obviously with a smaller stadium, I don't know if you would expect that to go up or down, really. Obviously, broadcast revenue will be huge next year, and hopefully it will pick up one or two new sponsorships as well. Ross Stewart sells more shirts than anybody. Um, apparently, we only sold 76 shirts. I mean, yeah, based on my experience when I went there, I managed to get a child size one. That's all they had in the club shop. We should probably focus on selling a few more shirts. Um, Stuart's probably going to be moving on. He lost his place towards the end of the season. And I mean, this time last year, we were saying he wouldn't be able to do it in the championship. He's certainly at 32. Moving into the Premier League is not the time for Ross Stewart. Similar to Danny Ward's situation, really. Players that we're probably going to move on just because they're just not going to be able to make that step up or back up to the Premier League. But this was the team of the year. Ward in goal. A back four all on loan. Skulls, Jackson, Rojas and Dubai. We're not going to have any of them this year. Um, unless we pay some of the release clauses. I mean, we... We set Jackson and Rojas up with future fees, optional future fees of around about 20 million. We could spend all of our money on a defender we've already got. That's a good way to get into the to stay in the Premier League, I think. Powell and Alonso. I mean, we'll give Powell an opportunity, maybe. I just he was with us in League Two. I can't imagine he'll still be with us in the Premier League. And then Vidovic was, of course, brilliant when he came in. Divine and O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue, worryingly, has a release clause of around six million. Um, so we've just offered him a new contract. He still insists on a minimum fee release clause of around twenty million. Um, but fingers crossed, we get that deal tied down in the next few days, so we don't lose him for almost nothing. And Leeburn, of course, as the striker in the team of the year. Um, Leeburn winning player of the year and young player of the year, despite being 24 and signing of the season. Seems the fans are quite taken with Miles Leeburn. He's six foot five. So, you know, I'm not surprised. Did I mention he's six foot five? Um, Devine finished as top scorer, despite everyone loving Leeburn, the striker. Stevanovic, most assists, despite losing his place when Vidovic arrived. Most man of the matches goes to O'Donoghue. And as mentioned, highest average rating was Leeburn. Um, Joni Debye set the new record for most yellow cards in the season. He's not going to be here next year, so let's not worry. Zvonarak is our biggest ever sale. Devine, fastest ever goal. And Damien O'Donoghue is the youngest ever goal scorer. So records being being set all over the shop here at Burton Albion. That is our all-time best 11. I mean, quite a few of those should be getting replaced in the near future, you would think. Whatever happened to Angerin? I bet he looks at us longingly now, wondering what might have been. He started three games for Heronveen in the uh, in the Eredivisie. He could now be our starting attacking midfielder in the Premier League next year. Because if we'd have kept him, we wouldn't have signed Alfie Devine. We probably wouldn't have done as well. But we wanted to keep him. Grass isn't always greener on the other side, you Wally. Goodness me. Um, but otherwise, that looks seems about right. Um, season review on there again. And now I guess we need to start coming up with a plan. It's the 20th of May. My instinct is to still wait till free transfer day because I'd like to move as much of this transfer budget into wage budget as possible because I don't feel like the wage budget we've got is close to enough to put together a Premier League squad. I mean, if we have a look at the salaries that are paid in the Premier League that will give us an idea of where we need to get our budget to to be remotely competitive so if we go to team detailed and salary per annum the lowest one in the Premier League is 53 million pounds which is Birmingham who got relegated um should have hired me as manager shouldn't they I think they got relegated yeah, they did get relegated serves them right should have hired me when they had the chance um, but they were spending over a million pounds a week on wages so their wage budget 
to get relegated was more than double what ours is at the moment. So the more of that we can move into wages, the better. I don't know how good the quality of players we're going to be able to bring in on free transfers is going to be. They're probably all going to be a little bit older, maybe looking at some loans. The other side, of course, is we just spend £30 million on Wonder Kids, don't pay them very much, and hope that they get good fast. They're basically the two ways this summer could go. And I guess we maybe need to do a little bit of a blend of the pair of them. This demonstrates just how desperate the situation is, though, in some positions. I mean, in goal, neither of them are Premier League quality. Our defence basically doesn't exist because they were all on loan. So we need an entire new defence and backups. Defensive midfield, I've talked a lot about not using Joe Powell. We might have to use Joe Powell because we don't... We're going to spend, be spending all our money here. Kingsley Aziz, of course, comes back, so he might get back into the mix again in that position. I'm surprised Alfie Devine... I mean, I guess we're showing as a two-and-a-half star there because there's not much in the way of backup to him if Vidovic is out on that side. Um, Gelhart is still around the place and could potentially be used if he doesn't leave permanently. Um, O'Donoghue is obviously great. And Lee Byrne, I think we probably have to give him a chance in the Premier League, but Ross Stewart probably needs to move on. And the question then becomes, is someone like Lewis Cherritt going to be good enough to be his backup? He got 10 goals in League One. Probably not. So we probably need another striker to compete with Lee Byrne. It's a lot to do for £30 million. Let's see what I can come up with. Well, it's the 1st of July, and I don't think I've ever been so afraid to spend so much money um, we've we've actually sold players more than we've brought anyone in. Nobody has arrived. We have sold Danny Ward because we got a frankly absurd offer for a 35-year-old of £2.7 million from Wolves. So Danny Ward has gone to Wolves, which means we have even fewer goalkeepers than we had before. Our youngsters did arrive. They're actually half decent for the future. None of them are going to be playing this season, you wouldn't have thought, but We've got Alan Batten, who's an 18-year-old right winger who's come in from Manchester City. Steve Baker is an 18-year-old right winger who's come in from Liverpool. Bearing in mind that Donny, who's already a right winger, and we've already got Clayton. Apparently, all the best new gens are right wingers. Uh, Sunday Aziz is a central midfielder, five-star potential as well. He's come in from Arsenal, but he's actually a potential future Premier League player. So definitely one to keep an eye on there. And Kerry Joseph is a striker who can play on the right wing. Don't you worry about that. Um, who's come in from Spurs. And is another one who's a potentially future Premier League player. So some decent youngsters in. But now the loanees have gone back. The squad is looking very, very bare. We don't even have a second centre-back. And Liam Kitching was our fourth choice at the back last year. We definitely don't want to be getting him anywhere near the first team. So we need at least three centre-backs. We need a goalkeeper. Um, we're actually offering Wilson as brand out. Chambers sure isn't ready yet, so we probably need two left backs. Imari Samuels is on the transfer list as well. Alex Jimenez probably isn't going to be good enough. Um, so I think we're looking to loan him out and maybe bring in a couple more right backs. Uh, George Marlowe is another one who's one for the future, though. He came in last summer um, and has been out on loan at Fylde in the National League North. In fact, two summers ago, George Marlowe arrived. Um, but he's still showing us five stars of potential. Not ready to be in the team yet, but hopefully we'll get him a League One Championship loan. Um, Alfie Devine, of course, will play further forward. Forward, so ignore him in the central midfield where really the only first team quality player is Rodrigo Alonso. Kingsley Aziz, probably, if we were still in the championship, we'd definitely be using him. We're probably going to look to loan him out to the championship or League One just to get him another season of development. So we need a couple of central midfielders. Joe Powell, I think we probably have to keep, if we look at our dynamics now, hierarchy, we can't really risk upsetting Stewart and Powell by trying to force them out. Anybody lower down the pecking order, we would. But these two, I think they just kind of need to stick around and be the elder statesman of the squad, but not necessarily play very much. But I don't think we can just move them on and replace them. Um, Xavier Simons probably isn't going to be good enough either. Um, we're still looking pretty good in the attack. Um, obviously, we've got Devine who can play there, who should be fine. Vidovic on the left should be fine. O'Donoghue on the right should be fine, fine, fine. Hopefully, we don't have to sell him. That would be a disaster. And then up front... We'll give Lee Byrne a chance for sure, um, but Stewart isn't going to be good enough, so we probably need another striker. Lou, uh, Lewis Cherritt will be going out on loan again, and we're trying to sell Joe Gelhart. So lots to do. I'm going to see what we can do in the way of free transfers. 
and then I might be brave enough to spend some money. You've got to remember, I broke this club's transfer record back in January when we spent £975,000 on Vidovic. The idea of just dropping five or six million pounds on a player, they've got to be the best player who's ever heard of Burton. That's a lot of pressure. So first wave of transfers done, and I think at the moment our squad isn't as good as last season's still. So we've loaned out a few more players. Jimenez, Marlow, Cherit, Aziz, and Wilson, Esbrand have all gone out on loan. We've sold Gelhart to Peterborough for £1.2 million. And we've started bringing in players. Firstly, some free transfers to fill out the defence. Ben Cabango is a 28-year-old Welsh international centre-back who's been playing for Swansea all his career. 39 games for them last year in the Championship, but then got released. So... I don't expect him to be a long-term starter for us, but he was free. And we ne did I mention we needed a lot of defenders? Uh, Imran Luza is in. Now I'm saying it out loud, wondering if it was a good idea signing a guy called Luza when we're relegation favourites. He's a central midfielder, but obviously he's in to play in either of those two roles, assuming we stick with our current system. The fact he can play centre mid as well means that if we do have to switch to the 4-3-3, um, he's an option in there as well. He's previously been at Watford for years. They signed him for £9 million. He actually played briefly for them in the Premier League and has been a regular starter in the Championship forever. We are. I realise we're signing championship quality players. Um, we then started breaking the transfer window, not for the first time this summer, um, and certainly not for the last. Viktor Popov is a 28-year-old Bulgarian international right back, can also play left back. He's better than anyone else we had who could play right back. And uh, yeah, £2.9 million, three times higher than the most expensive player in our club's history. And then four days later, we doubled it with Lino Sousa, who is an English left back, um, who's actually pretty good i'm actually pretty happy with him decent premier league potential um this is probably the best signing of the summer so far released by arsenal last summer um went to rangers on a free transfer barely played and we gave him five million pounds for him they are laughing all the way to the bank we have got a starting left back and then we've also got our goalkeeper steven bender um 29 year old german goalkeeper formerly on loan at my club peterborough which, which means i've officially heard of him um he was at swansea went to fulham then went to nurnberg where he's been playing in Bundesliga on and off for the last few years. Um, so two and a half million pounds brings him in to be our six foot four starting goalkeeper, all of which means our team currently looks like this. In fact, that's probably not the easiest way to show you it. If we go here and look at our uh, best 11, it's, it's not great. Kitching and Cabango as starting centre-backs in the Premier League. We didn't start kitching very often in the championship last year. Um, but Sousa and Popov, I'm happy with. Bender, I'm happy with. Loser comes in as the power replacement. I'm happy there. I was always happy with the front four. I think we've got a decent basis of a squad now. And now we just need to go out and sign some proper quality to fill in the rest of the gaps. We still obviously need more defenders. If we look at centre-back, um, we've only got three. One of them, Xavier Simons, who's never going to play there. So we need at least one more centre-back. Plus just players, Premier League quality players, please. Already the 21st of July. I spent almost all of the remaining budget on Lewis Jackson. We've had him on loan for two years. I just can't imagine us not having him. A player we took on loan in League One. We've now spent £13 million on in the Premier League. He was on the transfer list at Manchester United. We would have loved to have just kept him at the end of his loan, but the optional future fee we had on him was £21 million. We sent him back. He was there a few weeks. They put him on the transfer list. He has returned £13 million. I mean, it's a lot of money. For us, but in the context of a, prem a Premier League team, that's a Premier League quality defender for 30. It's a good deal. We just haven't got enough money to do enough good deals to keep us safe, I don't think. Uh, we've also signed a backup left back, Thomas Galvez. Um, left back is probably our strongest position now, or one of our strongest positions. We've got Sousa and Galvez, who are both pretty decent, although this guy apparently, three stars in our squad, is good League One player. We got 100 points in the championship last year. Our defence is definitely downgraded currently, though. We spent 2.6 million on him. It brings our summer spending up to 26.5 million pounds. Uh, the money is almost all gone, and the squad. It still isn't ready, boys and girls. 
Um, we haven't really explored loans yet, mainly because all the loans I've looked at have had incredibly large loan fees attached to them. Um, if I give you some examples and some proof that I've been looking at loans, um, I don't know, take an example, Mario Soriano. I don't really need him. He's in a position we don't really need. But what would it cost to loan him? Uh, we'd have to pay his full salary plus a million pounds of loan fee. We're just not in a position to do those kind of loans. So I will spend some time sifting through trying to find some free loans. But as it is, that might be the complete squad. Which, to be fair, the defence is almost as good as last year's. If we could go and get Rojas back or the other kid from Man United that we had on loan, which I might try and do now, um, and play Kitching and play Jackson with one of those, I think the fullbacks are probably upgraded. Jackson was obviously here last year. Bender is a much better keeper than what we had last year. And, and Loser is an upgrade on Powell. And the front four were already really good. So it's not a terrible team. I just... If anything, it's probably about as good as last year's team. We've slightly downgraded the defence, but slightly upgraded goalkeeper in midfield. It probably averages out. Let's go and try and find those defenders on loan. We uh, we haven't been able to find any loans. Did I mention before we signed James Trafford to be our backup keeper? We signed James Trafford to be our backup keeper. Ignore the fact that he's on £31,000 a week as a backup goalkeeper. Focus on the fact that he once transferred for £18 million and he's now sitting on Burton's bench and he's still in his mid-20s. That's, that's how we have to judge transfers like that. But yeah, not been able to find loans that we can do cheap just yet. In my experience, they get cheaper as we get closer to deadline day or on deadline day. So we might have to wait almost a month before we can bring in any loans to improve the team. So with the money pretty much being spent up, I think this is our team for the first day of the new season, which is now obviously next episode for you, but 5th of August, nearly a month before the window closes. I don't know. I, uh, well, I mean, I've already told you what I think of the team. We've not changed here. We've upgraded here. Kitching's a downgrade. The fullbacks are an upgrade. The keeper's an upgrade. Overall, it's probably a slightly better team than last year. Um, we are playing against Sunderland, who, of course, got promoted with us. How much money have they spent upon getting promoted? £48 million. Ah, brilliant. That's, br that's, that's genuinely, I'm delighted for them. Their ground is 10 times the size of ours. It's going to be interesting as well to see what kind of attendance we get for the second game of the season against Brighton because not only do we not have a pitch because they're currently doing the under-soil heating, um, but more than half our ground is closed. So I think there is a good chance we're going to set the Premier League record for lowest ever attendance, which is currently 3,039. I think we've got a good chance of beating that and getting Burton into the Premier League record books. But we'll find out about that in the next episode. If you enjoyed that one, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.